Vernon. Vernon Baker, Just Compassion. Abel Mario Garcia Gomez, uh, L. He, him pronouns, uh, Hillsborough School District. Anna Lyshen, uh, she, her pronouns, and it bridges to change. Awesome, thank you. And then staff, Kelly, you want to Meredith Cook, administrative specialist with housing services. Uh, Nicole Singh, strategic initiatives and relations. Tanya Mohammed, advisory bodies. So one of the things we want to do is allow public comment. So I just want to check in and make sure that I'm not seeing anybody online and we don't have anybody in the room because we were going to ask folks to write down their questions or comments for us um, while we did the next agenda item. So um, so great. Uh, so our next agenda. So, uh, <laughs> is to approve meeting minutes. So hopefully we had an opportunity to review those and I would uh, take a motion to approve those minutes. Jim moved and Zoe has a second. Can I get an all in favor? You can raise your hand, give your thumbs up, say aye. 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 Like we have a unanimous. That is perfect. Thank you, everybody. Um, getting through these first ones kind of quickly so that we can get to the meat of our discussion today. So the next topic is the chair and vice chair discussion. Uh, so we, we have our chair, that happens to be me. Um, so we wanted to have a discussion about the vice chair. Vernon, did you want us to have a minute to say something? We can't hear you, your mute is on. Sorry about that. That's okay. People keep knocking on my door. Oops. So, do you want to take a second? Or if you, if you have anything to say, I know you and I talked offline and, and all the things, but just wanted to check in. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Someone was talking to me, so I missed that last part. That's why I was saying I was apologizing. I got my door locked now. Yeah. Uh, the chair vice chair discussion okay oh okay the chair vice chair oh uh yes i had uh talked to kim uh a couple of weeks ago i believe it was uh just about the process and uh where i am in terms of uh how my experiences have been with chair co-chair versus i mean chair vice chair versus co-chair and i i just feel like that in my experiences uh, the co-chair uh, process has worked a lot more effectively for my situations. And so I had talked to Kim about uh, supporting her, but I just don't feel comfortable as a co-chair, I mean, as a, a vice chair. And so we had talked that through, and I also had talked to uh, someone else about that as well. But I'm 100% on board and support and wanting to move forward. Thank you, Brian. And I think that there's some agreement with you. For now, we're going to hold the chair and co-chair positions until we have an opportunity to review our bylaws, which is going to be later uh, this year. Yes. So at that time, then we'll be able to have these types of discussions where we can figure out exactly how we want that process to look. Uh, but we do still have a need for a co-chair. I did reach out to Drew, and he was happy to throw his name into the hat. I uh, wanted to check in if anybody else would be interested in that co-chair position. Are you saying co-chair or vice chair? Vice chair. Pick your term. Vice chair. It's vice chair. <laughs> right here on my page. Vice chair. <laughs> Is there anybody else that would be interested in that? Um, I'm going to do Catherine's awkward pause for a minute. If not, then we do have someone that has a nomination. Drew is willing to be our vice chair. 
I would entertain a motion to put that into place. Zoe has made a motion to make Drew our vice chair for the Homeless Solutions Advisory Council. Can I get a second, please? Can I second? Perfect. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, you guys. Uh, so the next piece was public comment. We don't have anybody, so we're just going to continue to move on to our subcommittee updates. Um, and Zoe is here, and I think she can help us with the performance evaluation technical subcommittee's first meeting. Uh, we have um, the presentation of the POC. Um, uh, system performance measure. I'm sorry, I didn't know how to speak to me. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Catherine uh, lead us to uh, other POC performance uh, system performance measure of. Uh, um, and all of those, the system performance measures, which we will get to in a minute, are in the meeting packet that was put out, and it's all available online. Awesome. Thank you. The next update was the lived experience advisory committee, um, and it is just an update from staff. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to run this by everyone um, as part of our efforts to uh, explore compensating county volunteers um, for their time and to make volunteering a more equitable um, path. Uh, this is also something that's emphasized in the Solutions Council bylaws. And so we are starting with the lived experience subcommittee. Um, because of the vulnerability of the population from which we're expecting volunteers to be and to better understand budgetary needs uh, to support access to our advisory bodies. Um, this is, again, consistent with how our Housing Services Division colleagues compensate the uh, current like resident, resident advisory body. Um, so as per the OEICE draft guidelines, um, time commitment, and the substance of service are the two main criteria for determining uh, stipend compensation. Uh, we expect to recruit five to 10 members for the lived experience subcommittee, um, and they will meet at least four times a year, but it could be more often um, for at least one, but no more than three hours. Um, so as per the OEIC guidelines, um, the members of that subcommittee will be provided about $50, will be provided $50 per meeting. Um, the compensation will be processed through finance. Uh, volunteers will need to provide appropriate doc uh, tax documentation. If they do not have such documentation or do not wish to share such uh, documentation, that compensation can also be made through gift cards. Um, any questions or you would ask questions. you would ask each of us to send you a nomination yes so you so have some people have okay um it would but i think that this particular update was something that some others were looking for before they great, uh, recommended anyone so i hope that that's helpful and um if you need to ask questions just feel free to ask me that later okay. Uh, Vernon, you had your hand raised. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. I was just wondering if there, uh, the possibility of making a, a nomination for someone to serve on that. So because uh, I was just wondering about that process. Yeah, so um, I'm definitely looking for uh, for members from the Solutions Council to send me recommendations for folks that they would like to, um, to nominate for the lived experience subcommittee. Um, the, Probably the, the best way to do that is just by email. Okay. So just shoot me an email. Okay. And for some reason, the volume is a little wonky. So it's, but I did hear what you said. Okay. So I'll get that to you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, the next adjust. I, wow. I'm going to have to learn that word. What's say? The next agenda item is our consent agenda, uh, which is our system performance measures. 
and Catherine Galleon is here to. Did I just say that with a? Yeah, that's yeah, that's like, like, yeah, um, that's that's the way. Come on up, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so as Obi mentioned, the system performance measures were presented to the performance evaluation subcommittee. Um, we had some robust discussion about them um, and some recommendations for any talking points um, to accompany them. Um, Going forward, um, but generally no question, no concerns about the system performance measures and they were approved to be submitted to HUD. Um, so they are on included in your packet. And so if y'all have any questions, I'm happy to do my best to answer them. No, otherwise we are just uh, looking for a, um, a motion to approve. I submit. Did you have any <laughs> Giving you the options. Okay, <laughs> okay it's not doing it. Usually, <laughs> right, folks. Sorry, we're figuring out the technology. It's not allowing me to share the way I normally share. But we're gonna do that. So. So the system performance measures um, are, are uh, they are a HUD designed and HUD required report. So we're using HUD data standards um, to complete the report and HUD definitions of homeless and the various program types that are, that are measured. Um, and it is a comprehensive overview of our system performance, regardless of funding source. So that's another place where um, this report varies from like SHS specific reporting that only captures um, projects that are funded by that source. This is system wide and includes um, programs that we fund and programs that we don't. So VA funded programs are included in this report. Um, OHCS funded programs operated by uh, Community Action are included in this report. Um, Office of Community Development, ESG programs also, um, the whole, all of the things that are included in our housing inventory. Um, so the, as I mentioned, they received the unanimous vote from the performance evaluation technical subcommittee and they were due to HUD on 313 and they were submitted on time and under budget. I don't know if they were not. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So the system performance measures, there are a total of seven goals included, which you can see in the report. The goal number six is a, um, a goal that uh, we are not. Uh, it's a prevention goal and only high performing continuum repair are allowed to report into that one. There is not a high performing continuum repair in the country. No one has achieved that threshold yet. We're all working on it. Um, so, yeah, and you have the report. So, if there are any other questions about that, yeah. how do we achieve that? You have to end homelessness. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> it's essentially you're allowed to count um, 
households that are eligible that are meet the homeless definition on other on under other federal definitions of homeless in your programs, but until we have um, housed all of the folks that meet HUD's definition of homeless, we aren't able to enroll people who meet that other definition. Those uh, broader definitions, like the Department of Education definition, we don't. They're not eligible for a HUD. Any other questions? Can be directed to Catherine, um, uh, and we'll move on to our next. Agenda item, which is our work planning, which is the meat of what we're going to do here. And Nicole, yeah, there you go. Yes, um, and we'll go ahead to the next slide. It's, this slide will look familiar. This is the same slide we saw last month. Um, just as a reminder of what we're doing with this work plan. So um, we're work planning for next fiscal year. So this is a, we'll, we'll charge or drive the charge of our work beginning July one of this year. Um, and we're bringing together the main funding stream. So you can think back to your first meeting, the COC resources, the SHS resources, a little bit of county general funds, the executive order funds we have, we have some grants from healthcare providers. Our, our fiscal year work, uh, work plan will bring that all together into a one homeless services system. So um, then, uh, and, and to think about kind of what this is meant, we began the practice of, of yearly work planning. On the next slide, you'll see through um, through uh, supporting so public services, and, and really, if you if you take a step back, each year has had its own kind of concrete theme and and, and clear outcomes from it. So this will be program year four we're planning for. But just to look back at where we were, the first two years of SHS, the first time that, that we as a county had meaningful homeless services resources, we were rapidly building up a system of care. We we brought on new shelter beds, we expanded housing options. And then around year two, we, we doubled shelter beds. We supported 2,500, uh, more than 2,500 people. And in the current year we're in, we're still growing. There's still programs coming online, but it's been more of a stabilizing year. Um, and, and we've been focused on, on focusing on sustaining what we built um, and doing an evaluation of, uh, of of our providers, of our programs, to see what's working, what's not, where where our interventions needed. That work is all going to continue on in program year four. But as we continue to think about um, uh, what our improvements, our system needs, we're kind of laser focused on, on two key improvements. The first of which being how people move through our system. So um, our system performance measures are, are good indicators of how people are moving through our system. And we'll see strategies in your materials that address that um, and, and um, programming that, that can help think about how we move people through um, our system of care, ultimately to health and stability. And then the second piece of that is improving our access to our system. So um, we're, we're undergoing uh, an equity analysis of our, our data now and understanding what that means. But what we know from last year is we we served our community fairly equitable in terms of those that had the needs from uh, various uh, racial demographics. We, we met those in for the most part, with, with the notable exception being for Asian American households. We're doing that review. I'll, I'll share some early indicators. It looks like we haven't quite made the progress we wanted to on, on that. So that's another focus of ours, ensuring that we're increasing access for, for Asian American households that are in need of these resources. Um, and and we'll we'll spend more time talking about those. And, and, and I, I'll, I'll keep brief because I want to make sure this is more of a dialogue. But I do also on the just the next slide want to take a step back and look at some of those um, goals. This is not a comprehensive. Um, list of, of all of the things that was on uh, page three or four of your um, of your materials. Um, but uh, so that they are here and, and if you're not um, in person, they're, they're on the website as well. Um, but wanted to pull out a few key things. So what you'll see on the left is kind of what we think of as our metrics. What are some metrics that we can set as goals that we know will be achieving success if we meet those? So um, we're, we're ready to reach the 100 and, or, excuse me, 1,665 uh, housing, uh, supported housing slots that we had planned for in our, our local implementation plan. So that was the overarching plan for supported housing services. We're, we'll be reaching that in year four. Um, we'll also, along with that, we want to help 500 new households because folks kind of move through those attrition of programs. It's the same for um, our our rehousing slots. Um, we have for uh, setting aside resources and plan to also prevent 100 or 1,400 evictions. Um, and I won't go through all of them, but you'll see those are those are really the metrics. Those are the exciting things. People, when we, when we do press releases, that's what we're going to leave with, but that's not the real work we're doing, right? And there's a lot more work to do. So 
Um, uh, on the right is, is some of the high level goals that, that we're at then. Again, better serving diverse uh, uh, populations, improving how people are moving through our system. Um, importantly, supporting our providers and our workforce so that while we're trying to meet those two goals, we're providing resources to those that did the most to support us in that work. Um, expanding our community engagement and advisory body work. Hello, thanks for being here. Um, and uh, thinking about integration with with other public systems and with regional collaboration. Um, and uh, we as, as uh, Washington County, but closely with Multnomah County and Clackamas County on, on programs, particularly related to the tri-county planning bodies, um, regional goals. And for Zoe's sake, I won't relive <laughs> what, she's, what she's been through in the last few months, but we had our first, um, our first uh, implementation plan for a, a regional goal moved through, and that was something I'm So maybe at another time we can bring that back, or if we, if we have time, so if you want to provide an update on that, sure, folks would be excited to hear it. Um, so with, with this, I know it's, it's not going to be a satisfying level of information, but I do want to prioritize time for discussion. So we're going to move to the first discussion topic. Um, I have three questions on uh, the screen here. We don't have to go through them line by line, question by question. What I really want to hear is, so when you think about the ultimate goal of, of improving access to our system and equitably serving our Washington County community, what does that look like for you? What's what's going well? What gaps do we have? Um, we as staff have identified language access um, for, for street outreach and shelters as a gap we'd like to look at and address. Um, and uh, we also know that our, our providers face barriers and, and serving diverse communities as well. We want to understand what are those barriers and how uh, can we as the county set strategic goals uh, to support our system. So I'm going to stop talking and uh, curious if there's any reflections or immediate thoughts coming up for folks. So when you think about this, are you thinking that we would prioritize certain language groups or um, you to think about that community by community? Or is there some plan that you have we can you know, utilize uh, I don't know, additional partnering to get to better outcomes for different languages? What is there anything already kind of in process on this, or is it like, no, really, I showed you what we were doing in the last years, we're just getting to this, and we need you to start from scratch. That's a great question. We have some of that work underway. I think within the county, there's 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 paths to, to language access. We understand we have our, our own pathways for, for translation services, for interpretation services. It's not clear that our providers have that same pathway. Um, and I, I see Zoe shaking her head. So, so clear there's a need to support providers in that. Um, and what I what we're curious about is, you know, what what should that support look like? Um, and, and particularly, you know, Cece, if, if you're seeing gaps for for the communities you, you serve at AARP, like what what were these strategies to support reaching those those communities? And um, for, for providers in the room, like what are the gaps you're facing and addressing this? And and how can we how can we be in partnership as we think about this is a system goal. Right. Well, we do see that the older adult is more present in the system than anybody expected, right? Providers are struggling, things are happening. So we absolutely <laughs> do see that. But I don't want to, you know, preemptively say, oh, work on that instead of working on language access, right? So I feel like there's a lot of different things in the second category, right? There's different barriers. And maybe there's been some focus or some plan at the provider level to share that story of older adults are having this experience, you know, what about, what have you guys done, what about this, you know, actually have some of the field experience kind of, uh, I don't know, inform where we're placing our priorities. But, you know, it, it makes sense if you're doing a kind of system like let's make the system work well, you do have to sort out how the language pieces can come in. And so it feels timely, it feels appropriate, but you also have to be responsive to what you're seeing in the field, right? Which is the question about older folks and you know, how we provide better things. I, I think uh, one of the things that we try our best is that to be able to uh, to fill the gap, um, like 
Marcus and materials have all been lessons of the knowledge in the county about uh, how to enter the system and where the resources are there and where to go. Region only based on zip code and also the assessment questions um, in a way we tweeted it down as well and depending on which the people it might mean that somebody's going to an access point or the access center that they are able to actually read it in their own language instead of hearing an interpreter as well. Or at the same time of hearing an interpreter. And break, is that Braille? Braille? Braille. 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 But something that we add to the point as not being communicated by mm -hmm. our agency. And then I see, I have seen the need mm -hmm. uh, of people trying to access our services in a way that we can have a That part of the um, inclusion. Mm -hmm. I have a few follow up questions if you don't mind. The first one being you're kind of doing the work to get marketing material in other languages. Is that something that the county should be supporting? Should we have more materials kind of available for providers in, in those languages? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a great work then goal. I mean, we, so, again, we do our best with service and stuff and collect the data of people we serve. Uh, but this is that the need for. But what about the county in general? Mm -hmm. um, And also um, a way to connect with those services out there. And then also you know, like to have one thing to do to start that um, a little complicated. Uh, so so yeah, trainings of how to use the um, trainings of when you're using a translator. How you are. We have a hand up on Jim. Yeah. Me too. Uh, Bernie, go ahead. Yes, uh, for us, uh, especially as far as our uh, our outreach uh, team, their concern is having the in the moment ability to uh, navigate through the uh, language barriers. We've purchased some uh, devices. I'm not. I can't remember what they're called, but they they seem to work pretty good with helping in the in in the moment in that initial conversation. The written materials are great, but that in the moment conversation just to kind of bring somebody in and to help them understand what's going on in the moment. I think is what we have been seeing as our biggest need and our biggest challenge in terms of uh, those kind of situations that are almost impromptu when when happening. So I think uh, just for us, uh, that's where we're seeing the biggest gap in in our uh, in the language and communication barrier. Thank you, Brian. Diana? Yeah, I think I have to bounce off of what Vernon said. We can provide a lot of material in different languages, and I have encountered that a lot within the community that we serve at the FJC. And um, Zoe, I don't know if you touched base on this, um, since I can't really hear the audio coming in from the the group, but I, I do want to say that when we're reaching out to homeless folks, it's great that we have all these services provided and all these materials provided um, in a different language. But what we are encountering with the homeless population is that when they're reaching out like via phone or in person, there's not someone that represents them in that language. So it becomes a lot harder for them to talk about their situation um, and sometimes an interpreter. Yeah, it's great to have someone interpreting, but they don't actually know what they're going through and how they can best serve them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And Stacy, you alluded to number two, some of the barriers. Mm -hmm. Um, did you want to speak more about that? 
No, I was just saying that, you know, having some kind of infrastructure where the providers are raising issues mm -hmm. up like this, like, oh, okay, we have started using some devices. How, you know, what, how are those devices working? It? That's a role that the system can play. Just, you know, yeah, yeah, to, to pay attention, to like move it through the system. Anybody else want to speak in any barriers you're seeing in running you kind of just did as well? Or any other considerations that we should be looking at? I think that there aren't there other meetings where you have mostly your providers? Seems like I have more facility providers. That would be a really good place to access that because that'd be really interesting to hear what their what the people that are saying what their barriers are. Um, and which would be a good discussion option for that meeting. Yeah, and that would probably happen before the uh, additional translated materials are available because if you really care that the problem to be solved the in the moment interpretation, you don't need to provide that. You want to right. flex the word that they want to do the most. Um, and then I think the next thing about goals is really kind of how they should the goals that we want to be Stabilizing our improvement system, right? Because this fourth year is really moving into continuous improvement. That's how I read that. Um, that means there needs to be a way that we're showing, we're setting goals and not giving back, you know, that actually not, we're always measuring the same things, but more, you know, putting in place things and checking them to make sure that we're so that's, that's how I would think about the level of continuous improvement not that it's always kind of one direction like okay we're going to do more and more and more now we're trying to specialize almost to have populations that are not currently being served as well you know take the next level and serve them and then hopefully move to the next population right because i think that you know sight impaired the heart impaired there's a lot of different places where you can make progress but setting a goal and saying this is what we've done for this year like yes we know there's other populations we'll we'll get to those we as a system can build up some um, history of improvement okay. we'll move on to the next oh, yeah. yeah we have a, another we have another slide talk there i want to ask a question and confirm that I heard two things rising to the top as things for us to put in the work plan. The first one being um, county support for creating standard materials in multiple languages. Multiple languages. That feels absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> that's, a nice, that's a nice one. Um, and then the other one is, is and, and probably words that it will come out how I am getting it out today, but. But some type of um, uh, increasing capacity for providers to to engage in interpretation, particularly for um, street outreach, to include potential technology solutions and trainings. And Vernon, I'd love to connect offline more about the the technology you purchased um, uh, for for your outreach team and see if there's like ways for us to share those best practices. Um, did I miss any other goals for for this work plan? I do want to acknowledge that there's there absolutely your your point of like these are these are concrete ones that you can cross off and then. I think I heard it differently. I think I heard Vernon and Zoe differently, particularly about interpretation. Mm -hmm. And the way I heard it is yes, we can use an interpreter to get the the meat of it, you know, this is the conversation we're having. But particularly in the work we do, outreach, you know, when we're talking about housing or sheltering, it, there's a relationship build that has mm -hmm. to happen. And that interpreter is not going to be able to do that. And, and you can't do that through someone else. Yeah. Um, so it's who are we hiring uh, versus just having interpretation abilities. And how to. Right. So, but I, 
there was a time that I don't speak English. <laughs> And when I, I remember I was trying to start having uh, hospital visits and my interpreter is my health provider was talking to the interpreter and was in, instead of addressing me. Mm -hmm. So, right. So mm -hmm. they were like talking like this. Yeah. I was just to listen to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will have preferred that the provider, even if it's not right. in my language, right. advising me. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of like yeah, how to, you know, right. utilize the first arts when you're talking to somebody that speaks another language. Yes. Also, the why, the a list of how to connect with this uh, agencies out there that provide this translation and I think there are like four, five or less <laughs> um, with the contact and how to connect and how to, the billing is a little complex uh, when you're using contact. Yeah, we can do one slide because this is kind of the first one, and then uh, the next slide will talk about system improvements generally. And again, these are these are just discussion questions as a starting mm -hmm. place. If there's anything from from the materials that jumped out as you as something you want to elevate for discussion, this is we're, we're eager for any feedback. But but the um, uh, general questions, you know, where is our system of care? Uh, just to reflect on that. Um, as, as a system where we're struggling, I think you know our system performance measures help to help paint that picture. Um, and then if there's other feedback or reflections on, on these goals or things we would hope to see that we're not in the goals, we'd love to, to hear from you. So I don't know. I'm sorry, I was just gonna um admit that I haven't seen this and it might be in here, but do we have a measure of the participation of culturally specific providers? It, Just because that other section was the equity section. So I was like, oh wait, maybe there is something that we would want to see every single year as part of this is how the performance of the system is moving. Now, is it in the I can't recall the exact number, but um, we have a, a, a set list of providers. And because we're not in the expanding phase, it's, it's challenging to think about how we add more, not that we're, we're opposed to just. It, it would, I, I didn't you know, say the goal was that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a little bit yeah. in the system, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, if you're monitoring how well your system is per performing on the equity side, you would want that information reported in. Mm -hmm. right? So if you just want to know, okay, yes, this is where we are. You had a specific measurement, like, oh, we're behind on um, serving Asian mm -hmm. populations. Okay, so now you're going to have a question where in the network are we going to make that improvement? And knowing here's the assets that we have, here's the way we could do that, mm -hmm. or wow, we really don't have a place to do that. We need to kind of reconsider when can we add? How do we add? Is there a way to partner all that kind of stuff? So that, that is what I would add to the equity piece to, to the last slide, but some of my comments I think fit more here because they're more creating that culture within the system for continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that I think there's just an opportunity, and I was yesterday. Uh, it was uh, Rachel Duke from SEBA who took the opportunity, and I just it's, it reminded me that we should take it more often. How much we've done in the three years that this funding has been in place. If there was a huge ramp up period, um, you know, those first couple of years, like you're talking about, just building a system. 
Um, and just taking a, a deep breath in and saying, wow, this is incredible. And for you know someone like me who's been doing this work for a long time now and been around and did band-aids for what 18 years. Um, this has been such an exciting time and uh, then there's room for celebration. There's opportunity to go, yeah, this, you know, burning. Yeah. Like this is so cool um, that we even get to do this and the privilege of being able to serve our friends in these tangible ways and life-changing ways. Um, so that is an area where our system is working. We are, we're, we're kind of doing it, but this is even a possibility. Uh, and just recognizing that. Um, and I might call folks' attention to kind of get at that point of like SPR. We are doing good work here. We do have a goal of, of um, collecting five client stories to help tell the story of SHS. So yeah, making sure that we're we're getting those experiences and uplifting those. So this is what I was going to say first, and I don't know if, if this falls under system improvement in your brain, but it falls under system improvement in my brain. Um, and it's a conversation I had at least with some of you. We've got to figure out how to get those stories out, and the we is the partner agencies. Um, our community at large, it's not that they don't want to hear from the county or the cities, but I think that we're going to have more of an impact if they're hearing from the partner agencies and the work that's being done and the stories we can share. And we can partner with our county and cities to get the word out. But figuring out the communications plan on how we do that now um, so that we're ahead of the game when ultimately this goes up for another ballot measure and we need those, those yes votes. Um, so making sure that we're always thinking about how, how are we getting out the important information that this is working, we're using the money wisely, and it's making life change in a positive direction. I, I hear that as a goal to add, but uh, yeah. uh, support partners in telling their story. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways we can do that. Right. Build with our expenses. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Size of buses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so why don't we maybe think about reworking this gold D instead of adding to it? I think you have this idea of a summer listening session. Let's change that into a partner-driven summer listening, multi-step, you know, multi-place thing, right? So you know, start decentering the county as the only yeah. storyteller from there, and you know, put this. Goal number three of having these stories, get those stories ready for that. Right. right? So, you know, it's not like now we have the stories, now what are we going to do with them? It's like, no, we've built in this storytelling approach right. to the things that we have to do for governance, for community, mm -hmm. right? So we we just do that. That's how we do it, kind of thing. Right. And so I think that that will be kind of a strong way to mm -hmm. make that happen. It's part of how we do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not limiting it, you know, and then maybe for the county, if you need five stories, that's great. So we can be sharing our stories all day long. I, I do want to share the, the summer listening session. We're hoping that you all are involved in that and, and kind of that, that helping to, to bring folks in and then also maybe convening the space where we, where we can. <laughs> Anytime we give opportunity, people take it and go negative. Oh, well, but that's not a reason not to do it. It's not a reason not to do it. It's figuring out how we, and I don't have the answer, by the way. Um, it's it's just figuring out how to do it differently. Mm -hmm. What we've been doing doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do we look at it differently? What could, what? There's got to be something better. <laughs> um, yeah. And it just breaks my heart every time. So, yeah. How do you how do you make the change? Uh, you know, but like I think it's it's has to be visual and it has to be something touch you. And then from what we do, we need the sessions of talking and bringing the community. That that those are spaces are are for people to like now, 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 right? That's a win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. We're gonna manifest. <laughs> We're gonna make sure it's a positive. Yeah. Yeah. And like okay, maybe this is good. Yeah. No, maybe it is good. It is. Yeah. Uh, 
Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, um, next steps, training. Everyone received an email um, with two training opportunities coming up. Can um, you can remind us in the bar? Yes. So um, if we could go, is it the next slide? It should be. <laughs> um, okay, so our next, first of all, our next meeting is April 18th, um, and these are the topics we'll be discussing with the last week's mothers. Um, so there are two trainings that uh, County Council is going to be doing um, regarding like public meetings, and I, I believe they're also going to have public recordings. Um, that's on April 3rd uh, and April 17th. The trainings are virtual, and um, you do have the option of attending physically if you do want to, but it's available by Teams. Um, also, you only have to attend one of them, um, so you don't have to attend both. Um, the, the same concept should be each. And uh, any questions about that? Just feel free to email me. And that email for me. No, it came from somebody else. Jacob, yeah. Jacob, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you're, if you're looking for it, it came from Jacob about these trainings and how to sign up for one or both. Okay, good. Yeah. I'll send out reminders, though. I know if you send out the response. It's in my Tinder talk. Perfect. We have a few more minutes before we adjourn. Any updates you would like to share from your world or impactful positive stories that you want to end on a good note with. Sammy? So maybe while folks brainstorm, um, uh, you want to give a, just, you'll hear more about this ne next month, but uh, the Department of Street Strategic Framework we're bringing forward uh, we, we as a department have looked at our mission and vision statement and I don't know how long, <laughs> many, many years. So we're we're taking a, a look at that and we've, we've done some work with our staff to, to develop um, a, a few mission statements for considerations as well as some core values that we want to use to drive our work. So we'll be bringing that forward to you all for feedback, see what's resonating with you. Um, it's going to be housing advisory. <laughs> Okay, housing, housing advisory committee, um, which is your counterpart um, uh, body that that serves the housing services division. Um, so it's going to them next week, and then we'll be coming to you um, April 18th. We'll, we'll do some more finessing with our with our staff, and then we'll be hoping to finalize something um, early um, in the next fiscal year. So we have a, a new exciting mission and vision. I know there's there's interest in this body to look at your own mission statement as a body, and once that's ready, I feel like that would be a great time to to do that as well. So wanted to, to give you a bit of a preview for that and more to come next time. I have a question on the uh, just a, a, on the work plan draft system improvement one number two it says develop a regional equity lens tool. Yes. What would that what is that? <laughs> it's a, a great question Jim and, and um, it's a it's a Moderately new, and I, by that I mean the last decade or two, um, governments have created um, racial equity tools to kind of review our policies, ask ourselves key questions about the impact of our programs to, to make sure, you know, if we're, if we're either or not, we're setting policy that we're considering the unintended consequences. So it's a series of questions that we'll get to. Have we thought about any all the unintended consequences that could come from that? Um, we doing uh, increasing our, our collaboration with the tri counties are realizing we all have different tools we use. We all have different staffing structures for how we support our equity work. So um, we set a goal as the tri counties to come together and develop a common tool um, that will that will all use. And we might have local variations on that tool to some kind of Washington County specific things based on on the population of our county, but. Um, uh, we, we do want to comment so we're, we're speaking the same language, we have the same definitions across counties, um, and, and there's at least a, a baseline set of, of questions we're asking ourselves that we know are true in every county, or we know that, you know, is, is the baseline that every county is asking. Any other updates for the good of the order? I'll make sure one, one good story, and, and I can make sure that get, get it to Marty so she can send it out afterwards. But 
I do want to call for those of you that follow Pamela Media. Um, our chair, Chair Harrington, co-authored uh, an opinion piece with uh, Mayor Witzel of Forest Grove and Mayor Bain of Beaverton, highlighting the work of SHS, trying to, to bang the drum, tell our story um, of that that good work. So we'll send that out to make sure you have it. It, it's, it helped uh, the the the, our, the op ed op walked through the impact of SHS, what that's meant, and, and what that is meant for in, um, un unmanaged encampments um, in, in the county. It was in the uh, Beaverton um, Times, all the all the West Side Cleveland papers. So I, I don't know that they put, they posted it in the Portland Tribune, but they they got it on the West Side papers. We'll send that out for you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. The meeting is adjourned. Have a good day. Take care.